Hello everyone and a welcome back to another video. So today I thought I would start a reading vlog for the week and it is Thursday so I'm going to take you through my weekend and hopefully some of next week maybe not we'll see we'll just we're gonna we're gonna see how it goes we're gonna go on feeling you know what if I feel like vlogging the rest of next week I'll vlog if I don't feel like it I won't you know we're just gonna we're gonna take it slow we're gonna see what happens anyway I wanted to start right now because I thought I would share some books that I bought recently um full transparency most of these are for classes okay so <laughs> these are not like all like super fun um books but I thought I'd share anyway because it's fun to get book mail and it's fun to you know have new books to read and I actually have already uh read completed one and then read some of the other another one so anyway let's just get into it so these are the books that I bought I did it's a lot I know although if you guys are looking for places to get books for like cheap um I recommend going to thrift books which is like an online like half price bookstore so all of these books like I actually got for a very good price so we'll dive right in one book that I had to get for a class was actually it's a play and it's Death of a Salesman by Arthur Miller, one of my new favorites. I had to read it for a class like last week and just flew through it. I tabbed it up like, oh my gosh, I loved it. And um, Arthur Miller is officially one of my favorite playwrights and um, I just really enjoyed this play. And it was, I th thought it was really well constructed and just like everything in this play um, so there's always an aspect that someone can relate to and I just think that's really cool um, if you guys don't know what this is about it's sort of about a um, salesman <laughs> obviously and he's sort of trying to create this American dream for himself and it's about a conflict that happens between him and his son and the family dynamics and just you know this idea of like the American dream and it's just oh it's so good it's almost Gatsby Gatsby-esque in a way of like um, you know the American dream is in the end kind of unattainable anyway amazing book it will make you cry it will make you you know not be mentally stable <laughs> but you know what it was good I enjoyed it um and I'm interested to like reread it later in life and see you know if I relate to different characters more and whatnot but anyway yeah so that was the first one then I got a collection of plays um and this one is um I, I okay so I bought this originally because I needed to read Antigone which is another play um for two of my classes this semester which is just like a funny weird coincidence so basically i saw this and i really liked the cover just because i think it's really like cool and vintage looking <laughs> um and this has Anti antigone um oedipus i believe is how you pronounce it oedipus the king and electra so i figured even though i only have to read antigone i might as well have this you know just in case i have to read these in the future and it's just like a nice little compact collection of plays so i figured why not um yeah so it was in pretty good condition too also there's this really funny like little portrait of this lady just like looking over the cover and i think it's funny so anyway i am very happy with this and obviously have to read it for class i have not read this one yet but i am looking forward to doing so okay so moving on from plays um the next book again another class purchase which is um things fall apart um, by and i really i am so sorry that i have not um looked up how to correctly pronounce this author's name but this is the author's name <laughs> um i will get to that eventually i promise anyway so this is the 50th anniversary edition um which is just beautiful and just so gorgeous i think this cover design is really really cool and i love the colors of it like very muted tones um so yeah and i really don't know anything about this book i believe it's um set in nigeria and uh, I have to read this for a class where we're talking about concepts of justice this semester. So I'm sure this has something to do with justice in some sort of way. And so I'm actually starting to read this um, in two weeks. So I will be getting to this very soon and I'm very excited about it. Okay, the next book is another one that I have already started to read and have gotten actually quite far th um, through and it's <laughs> insanely tabbed up already. Uh, but this is for a screenwriting class that I'm taking this semester, and it is Sid Field's um, screenplay, The Foundations of Screenwriting. So this is, if you are in film or a film person, you've probably heard of this book. It is very well known, um, considered sort of like the the blueprint for 
screenwriting and things like that. So I've been tapping it up like crazy because I want to reference this kind of stuff when I finally start to write my own screenplay. And um, I'm just excited to have this as sort of like a tool that I can use in the future. And I think it has a lot of really awesome insights. So yeah, I'm very happy with this. I'm on page, if you're curious, I'm on chapter 13, page 214. So yeah, hopefully I can finish this soon. Um, I'm reading it in like chunks for class. So I'm not sure like exactly when I'll end up finishing it, but it's in the works. The final book that I got for class is The Poisonwood Bible. Um, again, I'm also reading this for the same class that I'm reading um, Things Fall Apart for. So I'm assuming it has some element of justice in it or multiple elements of justice in it. Um, and it's interesting because this is, I think, um, oh, very interesting. So I'll just read the little blurb on the back in case you're curious. Um, the Poisonwood Bible is a story told by the wife and four daughters of Nathan Priest, uh, Priest, Priest, a fierce and evangelical Baptist who takes his family in mission, on, in mission to the Belgian Congo in 1959. They carry with them everything they believe they will need from home, but soon find that all of it, from garden uh, seeds to scripture, is calamitously transformed on Amer African soil. What follows is a suspenseful epic of one family's tragic undoing and remarkable reconstruction over the course of three de decades in post-colonial Africa. This is so interesting, and this seems like it's going to be a very insightful and very um, unique read, because I, I honestly have not ever heard of a book quite like this and with that kind of synopsis before so I look forward to getting to this I'm like browsing through it and it seems like this also is a multiple point of view book so there's like chapters are told by different characters which I love so yeah I think this will be really really cool and I love reading about books that you know are set in places that I'm not familiar with so like I read a lot of books that are set in like America or set in I don't know um, England. Um, so I'm interested to read, you know, this book, which I believe is set in Africa, and then Things Fall Apart, which is set in Nigeria, just to like broaden my horizons and learn a little bit more about different cultures and things like that. So yeah, hoping this will be another great read, and I'm sure I'll love it. So yeah. Okay, the final book that I bought is actually one for myself. If you guys have been uh, watching my channel for a little bit, you'll know that I'm trying to make my way through all of Sarah J. Mass's works. I know, don't come for me. I have fallen into the hole of, that is Sarah J Mass's writing and I am currently making my way through the Throne of Glass series and so I am currently reading an, uh, The Assassin's Blade which is the prequel and then I'm going to start Air of Fire which is my least favorite cover if I'm being honest. I just I don't I don't like the green okay like I don't why couldn't we have had like this color blue or like a darker blue or something for the back I don't know. And also, I'm sorry, but what is with the, these, like, all of these um, pictures of Selena and then Tower of Dawn is just, like, a medallion? Like, I'm sorry, what? Why did we break the cycle here? What's happening? Um, also, something interesting that I learned, and I did not know this, but the last two books in the series, so Tower of Dawn and Kingdom of Ash, I believe, are set at the same time. So people do this thing called dual reading and it's where they read both books at the same time but like alternate chapters so they like finish it and they like don't have to like have like a big cliffhanger anyway it just sounds amazing and I think I'm gonna try and do that but that takes a lot of effort so <laughs> we'll see or I might just read it in publishing order and go with it from there but anyway yeah so that's the final book that I got I hope you enjoyed this little mini book haul and I will talk to you later and update you on progress of what I'm reading. Should I do that now? I'll wait. Maybe I'll explain to you what I'm reading a little bit later. So yeah, I'm gonna do some homework now and probably eat dinner. And yeah, I hope you're having a great day so far. Okay, so it is, what, is it Friday? Okay, it's Friday and I thought I would give you a little update on my reading and sort of my reading plans for the week. Essentially, the main book that I'm trying to finish this week is the book um, The Assassin's Blade, which is the prequel in the Throne of Glass series. And I'm reading that on my um, my iPad. I'm reading like the ebook version. So I'm hoping to finish that up this week. I only have like 200 pages left maybe, so I really don't think it'll take me that long. But yeah, so that's on the agenda. And then I'm also in the middle of two other books. 
And I am kind of mad at myself that I have not made more progress on these two because I've been reading them for like about a month now. Um, and so the first one that I'm really going to try and finish this month is The Silent Patient. And I'm like not super far into it, but also like not, I, I haven't, it's not like I just started it. Like I'm about 150 pages in. Um, and it is like good so far. I think it's just like a little slow, which is fine. Um, but I think I just didn't like pick this up at the right time, if that makes sense. Like I picked this up right as the new semester was starting. And so I, I think I was like a little stressed and it's just been like a slow process to read this, but hopefully I can get back into it and hopefully finish it maybe in this video, maybe not. We'll see. <laughs> Okay, and then the final book that I'm reading, which I'm giving myself some slack for because, or for not finishing, because it is a big book, and I am annotating it, so naturally, like, it's gonna, the process is gonna take a little longer, and that is Plain Bad Heroines by Emily M. Danforth, Danforth, and so, again, made, I've made good progress. I am on page 145, and so I don't think that that's like bad progress at all but it, it's just slower than I would have liked like I really would have liked to finish this by now but it's okay it's fine it's whatever um so yeah I'm hoping to get those out of the way um and then up next I'm going to be picking up probably Air of Fire which is the next book in the Throne of Glass series that I have to read um, and then I also have to read a book for class, which is called Things Fall Apart, and I have to start that within, like, the next week and a half-ish. So, yeah, I will update you on how I go. Hi, guys. So, it is now Saturday. It's around, like, 3 p.m., and I've been just doing, like, homework and stuff. Um, I have a lot of papers to this week, so unfortunately I haven't been reading as much, but I did manage to make a good bit of progress on The Assassin's Blade, which is what I'm reading on my iPad. Let me pull it up. So since it's sort of like a, a collection of like short stories or whatever, the story that I'm on is I think the second to last one. So again, I'm making very good progress. I'm on page 287 out of 452. So I still have a little ways to go. Um, I am really liking it so far. Like I like this sort of pattern of um, having these little like looks into our main character's life. And they are sort of connected, but they're like individual stories, if that makes sense. The only thing that's like something that I'm struggling with is the fact that like I know how some of these characters will meet their end because in the series, like this is supposed to be like a prequel. So in the series, like when I'm reading it, it'll mention people who like die, you know, or it'll mention like, oh, this person's dead when, you know, she references him or something, or if she references a character that's like past. Um, so like reading this, there's certain characters that show up that like I know die, if that makes sense. So I'm like trying to prepare myself not to get like attached to these characters. Um, and it's like harder said than done because like sometimes like I really like a character or I really want to see them um, be okay, but I know that they're not going to be. And if you've read the series, you know there's one specific character I'm talking about, but um, so it's making me like a little like, ugh, like I don't want to read about how this character is gonna die because I know they die. Anyway, yeah, but I mean overall it's good. Um, I really love the way that like Sarah J Mass writes like banter between characters. I think it's really fun. Um, but yeah, and then as for my other reads, I yesterday on a whim um, got an Agatha Christie book from the like online library just because I was like in the mood for some Agatha Christie. And if you guys don't know who that is, she's an incredible writer. Um, she writes mystery novels. I believe she's since passed. Hold on, let me look up. Yeah, she is dead. <laughs> but um, she, oh wow, she died like a long time. Okay, so damn like she's older than I thought I don't know why I thought she was like around writing like books in like the 80s but she died in like 76 according to google so she was born in 19 or in 1890 and died in 1976 wow I did not like process that anyway but she's written like some really incredible books such as like murder on the orient express and then there were none death on the nile things like that um, and I used to like read her books religiously. Like when I was like in eighth grade, I would be checking out these like super old, like 
mystery Agatha Christie novels from my library. And people would always be like, why are you reading this book? Like, what? And I just, like, I loved the way that she wrote Crooked House, I think, was one of my favorites. So I really kind of want to get back into my Agatha Christie era, if that makes sense. So, um, yeah, I'm hoping to read some of her books coming up, but I don't know. We'll see. I'm in the mood to read books that I'm in the mood to read, if that makes sense. So, like, if one day I'm feeling a mystery, I'll pick up a mystery. If one day I'm feeling, like um fantasy I'll pick up fantasy so you know what I mean so it's making it difficult for me to like actually finish books because I keep my moods keep changing but I'm hoping to finish um at least the assassin's blade by tomorrow sometime tomorrow and then hopefully this week I can finally finish the silent patient um the silent patient's good so far it's just it's a little slow for me right now which is fine but you know and then I Okay, so I did start uh, an audiobook a while ago called Cloud Cuckoo Land, um, and it's written by the guy who wrote another, oh, what is it, by Anthony D Doer, Doer, I think. He also wrote um, the really, like, renowned book, All the Light We Cannot See, and I haven't read that one, but I know it's supposed to be amazing, so I have to read it, but anyway, so this is his, like, newer book called Cloud Cuckoo Land, and I really, really am liking it, however, it's very dense, if that makes sense, like, there's a lot that happens, there's lots of characters, we go back and forth, and so I knew that, like, off the bat it was gonna be, like, a little bit of a denser book, so that's why I picked up the audiobook, but now I'm, like, because I'm not, um, like listening to it every day I'm forgetting things so I put it kind of on hold and on the back burner and I'm gonna kind of wait until I'm in like a state where I can like listen to it for like a while <laughs> without like stopping and like where I'm in the mood to like listen to an audiobook so I'm not like forcing myself to listen to something that like I really need to pay attention to when I'm not like that into it because I know that I won't like retain what I'm listening to anyway so yeah it's gonna be on the back burner but it is really good and I really love the writing and I'm looking forward to getting into it but I do think it's gonna be something that I'm gonna wait a little bit more on if that makes sense so yeah that is my update as for things I'm going to do today finishing up some homework I'm going to journal for a bit um I might go and play Ooh, excuse me I might go and play um, some Genshin Impact because I haven't played in a little bit. Um, if you guys don't know, I'm I'm a gamer. I'm not really, but I like I like playing Genshin Impact on my iPad and then yeah, just like getting ready for the week, cleaning around my dorm. So yeah. Anyway, I will update you later. Hi everyone. So I thought I would give you an update on my progress this week. So I managed to finish the Assassin's Blade and I cried, I did. Um, am I proud of it? No. Do I think in hindsight I like shouldn't have cried? Yes, okay. There was no need for me to cry. Like it wasn't, like I knew what was coming. I knew what was happening. But I don't know, I just really liked this certain character and I knew going into this book that this character would not survive, okay? This was not a shock to me. And yet, I was crying. I almost, I almost vlogged yesterday as I was bawling my eyes out, but then I was like, don't know if I want to share that on the internet. So, here we are. Anyway, I am anxious to now start Air of Fire because I'm like, okay, I need, I like, I just need a distraction okay like I, I need to continue with the story in a different direction um but overall like in terms of like how the assassin's blade like actually was like the book itself i liked it it was fine i mean there's no surprises when you're reading a sarah j mass book like you you know what you're getting at least surprises in like the whole aspect of like the writing style things like that um so i mean it was fine i did like the little no novella sort of like thing anyway that's where i'm at with that um finished it now what i'm reading is i just picked up plain bad heroines i'm hoping to make a little bit of progress on this today um i've been just doing homework i'm at my boyfriend's um room right now i'm visiting him so yeah i'm just hanging out doing some homework and then oh i did get a new journal today it is a 2023 planner I'll give you a little sneak peek 
you would like. It's not super pretty yet, but we're getting there, uh, like a little, Ooh. So yeah, I just needed something to help me be a little bit more organized this semester. And I do have another journal and this is where I just like actually write about like my life and stuff. And it's like cute and all, and you know, I like decorate it. And, but I just, I just need something where I can like see my assignments. I can write them out, I can cross them out, you know, things like that. And I have like a running to-do list on my laptop, but I just need something a little bit more like broad and like an area where I can mark down like events that I'm going to and stuff that's not virtual so I can like physically hold it and see it. I don't know. My brain is weird and I, I'm going to try this. It might not work, but um, yeah, we're, we're going to see how it goes. And I really did like this journal. I liked um, the like structure of it. Like here, I'll show you. So like every week you have like um, each day with like times and then over here you just have like a grid paper sheet so you can like write down whatever also it has these really cool things at the bottom so like each page has like a little tab that you can like tear off so like you don't even need to use a bookmark you can just like flip to your page which is so cool so yeah I was like okay you know what I'll, I'll, I'll get it we'll try it out so it's from the brand in case anyone's curious uh ro rodia rodia so yeah um if you guys would be interested in, in more journaling videos let me know because i am a journaler it's something that i do and <laughs> i have like a few like journal or uh, videos on here on like this channel but if that's something they didn't do really well so i'm like maybe it's not interesting to people i don't know but i thought it was interesting we'll see um, but yeah, so I'm going to try and get through a little bit more of Plain Bad Heroines. And I don't know, maybe I'll wrap up this vlog some point, like, tomorrow or the next day. Just give you, like, a little overview of, like, what I read and stuff. Um, but yeah, we'll see. So, see you later. <laughs>reading update i am 100 pages from finishing the silent patient which is so exciting so i'm going to try to finish it tonight um i'm definitely liking that a lot more now i think more things are beginning to be revealed and there's a little bit more of um an element of mystery to it um and so yeah i'm i'm enjoying it for me it's sitting at like a 3.5 stars um it's definitely good um alex mccallity's his writing is a bad at all like I really enjoy his writing but it's not like something that's like standing out to me as like super profound in any, in any sort of league anyway so I don't know I just feel like it's definitely like a fun thriller and it is what it is like I don't think there's any like you know uh major thing that sets it apart from other thrillers I've read so yeah I mean it's it'll be a you know good read and again maybe that'll change <laughs> when I get to the ending if there's some like big reveal or something um but I'll let you know in like the next vlog after I finish it and stuff I take back my previous statement it is now a solid four stars um the ending was crazy um I think that I saw one aspect of it coming if you've read the book you know like the twist that i'm referring to like there's one aspect that like you can sort of begin to suspect that something's off but i mean wow what a brilliantly written book and i mean oh my goodness like that ending that ending wow anyway back to our regularly scheduled programming um 
other reading updates, I actually did start a book by Hank Green, which is an extra, hold on, I forget the name of it. Okay, so it's called An Absolutely Remarkable Thing, and I've heard like lots about it, um, and I love Hank and John Green. I think those two brothers are like the funniest humans on the planet. Um, I'm a huge um, John Green fan. If you've watched my channel, you know that The Fault in Our Stars is one of my favorite books of all time, and like I know that's a basic answer for, you know, people, uh, especially like young women, but you know what? I like what I like, and it's a fabulous book. Um, and I don't think there's any shame in liking things that are, uh, you know, widely appreciated by a younger audience who happens to be female. I think oftentimes, um, women, especially young women and girls are put down, um, because of their interests. And I think their interests are often made fun of because their audience is, you know, widely young women. And I think that's really unfair and that's a narrative that needs to change, but, that's neither here nor there. Um, <laughs> bottom line is I love John Green. I love Hank Green. So um, I'm really excited to read Hank's book. So the first thing I've read from Hank, um, I'm a huge fan of his, you know, YouTube crash courses. They got me through AP psychology <laughs> and um, a little bit of my uh, freshman colloquium classes. So I'm really excited to read his book and I'm loving it so far. I think it's such a, like a cool concept. Like the concept of it is essentially this girl is walking home one night and she stumbles across this giant statue that she had never seen before and so her and her friend like make like a funny like YouTube video about it and then they realize in the morning that the video has gone viral and all of these statues have just like appeared all over the world and in different countries and no one knows where they came from and any sort of security footage has been like wiped so I just think that's such like a, a creative topic so I'm excited to see where that's going, right? I'm listening to the audiobook. Um, and then other than that, yeah, that's been kind of it. I hope you've enjoyed this vlog. Um, let me know if I should be making more of these. I feel like sometimes it's hard because I don't finish a lot of books in a week. Um, like really this week, I, well, I only finished like one and I'll probably finish this tonight. So like, I, I always feel like I'm not giving you enough content in these videos in terms of reading, but at the same time, it's like, this is just the pace that I read at. So unless you guys want like a three week long video of like what I'm reading, you know, and seeing me get through like three, four books in that time, um, then, you know, maybe if that's something you guys want to see, then I'll, I'll do it. But yeah, I just feel like keeping these reading vlogs like a week in length is, um, I, it just makes more sense to me, but I understand that like I'm not finishing like a ton of books, so it might be a little boring. So if you're feeling that way, let me know. Also, if you guys want to see other content too, besides just like my book content, um, you know, I am in college, so it's kind of hard for me to like, you know, go out and do activities, especially when I'm currently not working. So I don't really have a lot of like money to be spending to go do like fun activities, but I mean, you know, hopefully that'll change <laughs> soon. I'm being trained to be a writing tutor right now. So hopefully I can start making an income and putting that towards, you know, fun experiences that maybe I can bring you guys along with um but yeah so I hope everyone is enjoying this video and um I hope you're having a lovely night or day or wherever you're watching this or whenever you're watching this um let me know what you guys think and if you have any suggestions for any other video topics in the future and thank you so much for watching if you've watched this long it really means a lot to me I know my channel is like not super huge um and so it's just really nice to, you know, have people who stick till the end because I think that that's really, really, um, it, it makes me feel really loved and cared for because you guys are um, choosing to spend this time out of your day with me and I appreciate that a lot. So yeah, I hope you guys have a lovely evening, morning, afternoon, wherever you are, and I will see you in my next one.